rules already. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Tough skills now if you want. The sound of the bell, come on out. Handle your business, ladies, let's go. The mutual respect has to be set aside. The Bellator Flyweight Championship up for grabs here in front of a sold out Neil S. Blaisdell Center. Aliba Leigh McFarlane undefeated at 8-0, making the second defense of her title against right, Valerie Letourneau, who says she is visualized going home to Montreal for Christmas with the Bellator Flyweight Championship in her luggage. This is round one. The champion McFarlane in the red gloves, the challenger Letourneau in the blue gloves. McFarlane defeated Emily Ducote in their rematch. Utilizing the Dead Orchard, John, a 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu move that was created by Eddie Bravo Black Belt, Nathan Orchard, essentially a triangle choke with both of the both opponent's arms, arms in. Exactly. And so she is a very creative grappler. And she has, of course, five submission wins to her credit. She's an outstanding grappler, and she's just getting better. It's her ability to now transition from one submission to another that is changing the level of, who, of what Alimale can do. And McFarlane successfully defended her title with an armbar submission victory over Alejandra Lara in June of this year. Letourneau comes into Bellator at 125, is 2-0 under Bellator banner and, banner, and she's now 3-1 in her career at 125 pounds. 125 is absolutely the weight that Valerie should have been fighting at the whole time. It just there was no class where she was fighting there at that weight. So she had to try to go down to 115. And then going down to 115 caused her a lot of problems. And she would lose energy in the fight. She would be fighting the first round, second, third round. She was struggling and she was losing too much weight. It is good that she is able to fight at a weight that she should be at. Latorno representing American top team, working with her. Longtime partner Hector Lombard made her MMA debut in March of 2007. Sprawl on the takedown defense by Letourneau, but as they stand up, McFarland lands the right. All that is good, and you know it doesn't matter that Alimale doesn't land that takedown. It's the matter of Valerie has to now deal with that. She has to think about that and it can change what she does in the stand-up attacks. One of McFarlane's main training partners, Liz Carmouche, involved in the first women's MMA fight in the UFC against Ronda Rousey, and Carmouche has really helped McFarlane hone her skills. Of course, she also works under Manolo Hernandez and Richie Boogie Man Martinez at San Diego Combat Academy and 10th Planet San Diego as we reach the midpoint of the opening round. Very much a feeling out process going on between the champion and challenger. You know, there is a feeling out process. And you've seen, what you've seen is a, a, a difference in the attack. Valerie, this is what I was talking about. Alimale cannot let Valerie dance on the outside and go where she wants without cutting her, cutting her off. You need to cut off that footwork and attack on that cutoff. Final two minutes of the round as McFarland lands the jab. That's exactly what I'm talking about, what she just did there. Letourneau opening up, finishing off that combination with an inside low kick to the lead leg of McFarland. But Letourneau plants the jab upstairs. Feints, footwork. McFarland trying to do the same thing. Both of them trying to disrupt the other's rhythm. Find a path to an effective attack. Both, both girls are being very composed. They're taking their time. They're not, they're not just crushing that space, but they're looking for their openings. And this is a feeling out system in that first round. Under a minute left in the opening frame. Letourneau's <laughs> corner, imploring her to set the pace. They want Letourneau to, to dictate the pace here. As Letourneau hopes that McFarland's return to the 808 ends in 
heartbreak for the defending flyweight champion with 30 seconds left in the first frame. Yeah, the turtle's using very good footwork to keep Alimale off balance and away from her. You gotta look at it, but Alimale has to get close enough where her hands can be on Valerie for that takedown to come. It wasn't until McFarland beat Emily Ducote in their first fight that she felt that, yeah, I, I can do this MMA thing full time. Well, she's proven that she can do a lot more than that as we go to round two of this flyweight championship fight. Stop. Ready to fight, Pedal, let's go. Oh, Letourneau's more than ready to fight Bell in round two. You mentioned your keys to victory at the beginning of the fight after the first five minutes as McFarland secures the takedown on Letourneau. Well, I guess I just may have answered my question looking for what you wanted to see in the second round. And McFarland immediately gets the takedown by Letourneau controlling the posture. Limitley taking her time. This is exactly what I would have told you. Limitley needs to figure out a way to start crushing that distance so she can get this takedown and start working her strength against Valerie. And, and Letourneau not just controlling posture, but really putting a squeeze on this control here. Well, she is, and she's trying to bring that, that guard up. She's controlling that posture, but look at Valerie. You know, you've seen her. Valerie is very good off of her back. She has got a good ground game. She's got a good submission game. What this is not going to be easy for Alimale. Yeah, Letourneau, though, has a recorded submission victory since 2009, and now McFarlane Stacking Letourneau up. McFarland nice wanting to over. get the full mount. I nice step over a little too much. He's way too high. And Letourneau attacking the right leg of McFarland. Elbows now being dropped by McFarland. McFarland needs to keep her arm against that cage, use it as a pressure point and a balance point, and just start attacking Valerie here. Letourneau, who challenged you on Elia Grecek, well, she now has a training partner of hers, an American top team, and, and here McFarland now, trying to shrimp, trying to, oh, but it's Letourneau that's turned the tables on McFarland. He's out on top. And there's a right hand, a series of rights by Letourneau. It's not a good thing with Alina grabbing over the head. It can get you in a lot of trouble. She needs to take her arm off of Valerie's head. She's looking for a throw. That's a better job with the wizard. The turnover resets in the center of the cage. Inside low kick delivered by McFarland. The turnover twice the experience of Alimale McFarland, and again, as we mentioned, John, the, the caliber of opposition of the Turtles been inside the, the cage with. It is so hard for people to understand when, when you have been there and done that with these people that are extremely, you know, just, they're just great at what they do. You know, a Joanna Jacek, you look at Claudia Cadell, these are girls that are all considered the top people in the world. Valerie Letourneau has gone the distance with all of those girls, and she has a great skill set, and something that she's doing right now is controlling that distance, pushing Alimale back, making sure that the fight occurs where she wants it to be. Letourneau felt that she didn't need to keep this fight standing to win. She's very confident with her jiu-jitsu. Been training jiu-jitsu since she was 19. She just loves to fight in the stand-up as this partisan crowd rallies behind Alima Lee McFarland. Is that an eye poke? A minute and a half left in the second round, and McFarland willing to touch gloves. And it does appear that the turtle had issues with that left eye momentarily. Yeah, she did, and you, you saw McFarland being the sportsman yeah. that she is, she packs off. A lot of people would go, oh, really? And then you, you don't say anything, and you, they're gonna go and attack you right away. Well, McFarland. Well, McFarland definitely needs to figure out how to stop this footwork of Valerie Let's know If Valerie is able to continue in control of this fight, it's gonna start to slip away from the Lindley. Final minute of the second round. Letourneau beginning to get loose, finding a rhythm. Trying to establish the jab. McFarland 
Also trying to find a way on the inside, and that's not the way you're going to do it, John. No. Yeah, you got to set things up. Throwing a big haymaker is great when someone's hurt, but it's not going to do anything when someone has got full consciousness that they know where they're at. You've got to set those things up. Less than half a minute remaining in the second round. What you're seeing, you're, you're seeing Valerie. When Alimele attacks, you see her countering. She's not just accepting, she's giving something back. When Alimele is not attacking, the Valerie attacks, and you're not seeing that counter from Alimele. In over a decade, and we are set for the next round in this flyweight championship fight. This is round three, scheduled for five. The undefeated champion, Alimale McFarlane in the red gloves. The challenger, Valerie Letourneau in the blue gloves. John, you have it for Letourneau through two rounds. I do, and it, it, the, the one thing that was close in the second round was those elbows that she landed against the fence. But in my opinion, Alimale needs to step up this attack in the stand-up. If she's going to stand with her, she needs to start throwing and landing and countering what Valerie's doing. Well, a new champion was crowned last night here at Neil S. Blaisdell Center at Bellator 212 when Michael Chandler became the first Bellator three-time champion. Back on top at 155, Valerie Letourneau would love to uh, repeat what happened last night tonight. But McFarland looking for the takedown and well defended by Letourneau. Four minutes left in the third. But a wide base by Letourneau, putting her weight down on McFarlane and doing a good job of defending thus far with the wizard, but McFarlane trying to find an opening and does land some left hands to the face of Letourneau. Nice sit back by... Oh, McFarlane has Letourneau's back! Nice sit back by Alina. That was a beautiful move, going exactly where she was going. McFarlane has a standing rear naked choke submission victory. Now looking for one on the ground. Letourneau trying to defend. Valerie being very calm in this position. She's been here before, but Alimale has a lot of time to work from here. And she does have a lot of setups and a lot of attacks. Letourneau's been knocked out twice. She has never been submitted. And this crowd exhorting Alimale McFarlane. Alimale's starting to work to catch that arm so she can make her a one-arm defending fighter. Notice how she has that arm trapped now, Morrow. That's a bad problem because Bowery only has one arm to defend now against that choke. Alimale is doing a great job of systematically breaking down her defense. She's going for the arm. McFarlane looking for the arm bar, but Letourneau now on her feet. Letourneau puts the knee down, drops a hammer fist, but now the triangle. And that arm is across. She's in trouble with that. That is tight. It's going to cause her a problem. Remember, McFarlane won the title with the Dead Orchard the variation of the triangle arm bar. Now she's got a triangle on Letourneau, and it's McFarlane delivering strikes. The more you see McFarlane extend your hips in this, the better off it's going to be for her. Do not let Valerie collapse your hips. Beautiful job. There it is. There it is. Let the luau begin. Alima Lay McFarlane returns to Hawaii and defends the flyweight championship in style. The Eliminator improves to 9-0 with her sixth submission win. What a moment. Valerie Letourneau tries to get herself back up. She takes the back. And when she takes the back, it was the maturity of her grappling that was on display. She starts to push that arm down and traps Valerie's right arm with her leg. From that point, now she's dealing with trying to choke someone that can only defend with one arm. 
but then switches it to the arm bar. Now he tries to defend, transitions to the triangle, and from that position right there, that is tight. That is a beautiful submission by a great submission fighter in a Lima McFarland. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, the tap comes by way of a triangle choke officially. Three minutes, 19 seconds into round number three. The winner by submission and still Bellator.